What's up, folks? This is Justin Garcia, a.k.a. Master Chim, and welcome to another verse of the Havamal. For those of you that have been following the series, you know that I am using Jackson Crawford's Wanderer's Havamal uh, for his translation. It's my favorite translation so far. I understand there are more translations, and whichever one you choose to use, uh, feel free to uh, sort of put a slant on my feedback to accommodate the differences in those translations, uh, but I am quite fond of Crawford's translation. One of the reasons being he is an academic. He is not somebody that has more than an academic uh, investment and interest in sort of adding his own energy to the translations. So I sort of like the translations as raw and plain as possible. And any wisdom that could be distilled, I'd much rather do on my own. Okay, so today we're going to be dealing with verse 48. So I will read verse 48 of the Habamal. Kind, brave people live best. They never nurture a grudge. But an unwise man worries about everything. He dreads even repaying a gift. So in this verse, there are a couple things that we see. Uh, number one, there is a distinction to be made between a kind, brave person and a un, and an unwise person, right? So that is the distinction to be made more generally. So that's worth noting. Uh, the, you know, the, the verse sort of puts those two categories of people on opposite ends of a spectrum. So kind, grave people live best. So when we use a term like best, and I understand these terms are interchangeable to a degree because of certain translations, uh, but my use of the term best implies, for my purposes, things that allow me, my tribe, those in, that I'm connected to, uh, to be more successful in the development of our paths, the pursuit of our missions. Things that are good are things that uh, sort of empower me and the people that I'm connected to, to achieve our goals, right? So... Uh, when we use the term best, there isn't, and nor do I think there should be a sort of universal understanding of what that means. You know, what's good for somebody could be bad for somebody else, to put it, uh, you know, simply. So, kind, brave people live best. Now, the implication here could be that they live uh, a most enjoyable life. Uh, uh, I think that is a, a pretty shallow understanding of it or, or a shallow usage of the, the phrase living best. I would suggest that what is being said here, what's being sh shared here, is kind, brave people live best in the fact that they live most congruently with what is best for themselves and their tribes, the people connected to them. So a most effective life, a most... Um, dare I say moral, but not in a universal sense, life. And it says they never nurture a grudge. So another distinction to be made here, aside from kind, brave people on one end and unwise people on another, is in the first part of the verse, they never nurture a grudge. In the last line, he dreads even repaying a gift. Worries about everything, he dreads even repaying a gift. I would create another distinction between those two sentiments as they never nurture a grudge. They never add energy to the negative. They never invest their own energy, whether it be resources or just life energy. Uh, and I don't mean that in some, you know, esoteric, you know, way. I just mean, you know, uh, are you well rested? Are you tired? Well, what gets you from rested to tired? Uh, the expenditure of your energy, right? So they don't waste energy nor resources uh, on something negative, like a grudge. You know, those of you who've been following my content, I've commented on this in many different applications over the years. You know, when it comes to uh, um, the idea of revenge or even, you know, to, to some extent, the idea of the, the concept of anger, you know, why are we adding this energy to this sentiment? Is it necessary? Is it an investment? Meaning, does this, uh, does the, the, the investment of this energy give me a return? 
right? Uh, that would define it as a, uh, an investment. If there is no return, I am simply spending this energy or expending this energy. Um, and I just need to understand what these things are, you know? Again, I don't need to add uh, any value judgment at this level. It's really just, you know, understand the the causes and effects of, of the things that you are interacting with. And it allows you to sort of choose your path a little bit more consciously, you know, rather than in a reactive manner, in an emotional manner, which so many people these days seems to be uh, seem to be suffering. So never nurturing a grudge is not adding energy to the negative. Uh, but an unwise man worries about everything. He dreads even repaying a gift. So here, a gift and its repayment, or just giving a gift in general, it's something that is positive. It's connected to, to something positive. You know, when we give gifts, there is a, a, a whole conversation to be had uh, about the value of that type of gesture, those types of rituals, what it does for the sort of cohesion of a tribe, of a, of a community of individuals. You know, the fact that we are taking our resources, however we came about them, and basically, you know, gifting them to somebody else, um, that is seen in tribe as an investment. You know, you are giving this to me in the form of a gift uh, because you believe that giving me these resources is going to positively affect maybe our alliance, maybe the tribe that we're connected to. So it's why it is such a a, a community sort of tribal based type of ritual, you know, the act of gift giving. So I'm going to read the verse again. Kind, brave people live best. They never nurture a grudge, but an unwise man worries about everything. He dreads even repaying a gift. So the unwise man here is seeking out the negative. He's looking for the glass half empty type of perspective. And that's where he's choosing to waste Right, to spend his energy and resources. Um, there is no practical value to this. You know, if we say the opposite of that, you know, at least the opposite as designed by this verse, kind, brave people, if the opposite of that is living in a way that produces the most effective, successful results and impact on our individual lives and our tribes, well, what is being said here is that it is unwise to add energy to the negative aspects of one's life because ultimately it does not fare favorably on your individual pursuits nor the benefit of the people that connected to you right so kind brave people live best they never nurture a grudge uh, if you're an individual who is kind and brave i mean kind could be considered as uh, generous uh, with our communication with our emotions with our energy a uh, brave is uh, also generous in the form of an investment of assuming risk, you know, for the benefit of somebody else. Uh, that is who we consider, you know, how we would consider somebody to be brave, right? So people who are generous, you know, whether with their energy or in resources or, you know, with their, their lives, with their, you know, with their wellness, their safety, you know, by assuming risk in the name of another person. These types of people live best. They live in a way that is in accordance with, with the most successful outcomes for one's life. However, an unwise man, somebody who is not in touch with this wisdom that is available to them, you know, either through his own experiences, through the feedback of his life and his circumstances, or through the shared experiences and the power that has come from them uh, through the people that he's connected to, whether it's directly by people in his life or uh, through the traditions of, of, you know, ancestors and generations past, you know, this person is unwise because he worries about everything. He adds energy to everything. He dreads even repaying a gift, meaning he adds energy to all these negative aspects of his life, even to the point that when somebody does something positive for him, he, he interprets it as being something negative, right? And that would be considered unwise. So, as is uh, usually the case with the wisdom of the Havamal, I agree. I have real-world applications, real-world experiences that illustrate these ideas and concepts. And, um, and I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and listening to me share uh, my take on this. It's not the only take. There may be people who disagree, agree with some parts. Um, if you do so, please feel free to give me some feedback. 
Uh, I will not feed the trolls. You know, those of you that are just trying to uh, sort of act out for attention, uh, I'm not going to waste any of my energy on you. Uh, but those of you that are looking to pursue and, and therefore even help me pursue, you know, greater truth and understanding, you know, of what this wisdom is about, then I completely welcome it. Uh, also, if you are enjoying this, feel free to let me know. Uh, feel free to share it. Uh, I have a lot of what is considered by mainstream society controversial content. So don't expect this thing to sort of uh, be treated fairly by any, you know, YouTube or Google algorithms. So as usual, I, I rely on the people that are connected to me individually. Uh, if you have any suggestions for other verses, uh, I would like to sort of eventually get to all of them. You know, I have a good time doing this. Uh, but if there is a preference, I do have a couple in the queue based on, you know, suggestions uh, from from people who have given me some feedback, uh, as is this one, right? Shout out to Jamie. Uh, so I appreciate you guys for checking this out. I look forward to my next verse of the Havamal. And as always, brothers and sisters, thank you for your time.